just enough is enough. Seems like things just go on for a while and sometimes longer than we would like. But then there's almost like a line in the sand where someone says, I'm not putting up with it anymore. We're not doing this anymore. I'm putting an end to it. I thought about these nations that harbor terrorism. For how many years were they allowed? I mean, literally to go and do whatever they wanted. They're blowing up embassies. I know they're still doing some of that now. I mean, they're hijacking people. They're murdering people. They have no concept of human life. They're training little bitty boys from young ages of seven, eight, nine, up to their teen years. That man, if you if you're killed for your faith and you become a martyr, what a wonderful thing you are! Just kill the infidels. And if you'll go and blow people up, this is an honorable thing to just take innocent people that don't believe exactly the way you do and just spark terror in them. And this went on for years. And, and finally one day, somebody stood up. Some little you know, great eagle stood up and flew over there and said, "I don't think so anymore." And we invaded Iraq and said, "You're not going to be a terrorist nation." Now, whether you like it or not, whether you agree with it or not, doesn't really matter. The fact of the matter is, somebody said it's not happening in this country anymore. And then we said it's not happening in Afghanistan anymore. We said it's not happening in Lebanon anymore. You said, "What are you saying?" At some point, finally, people said, "No, enough is enough." And we're not going to stand by and allow people to hijack our planes and fly into our buildings and kill our people and just say, "Hey, don't do that. We're going to do something about it." Now, like I said, we are so passive sometimes in America where people say, "Well, preacher, I just don't think we should be in conflict. I don't think we should do some of that." That's a whole other message. But I'm going to tell you something, folks. Probably have you had your loved ones killed. Probably have you had somebody, somebody that you love very closely, taken out for for no reason at all. No reason at all. And then you probably say, "Hey, somebody needs to do something." And you'd probably say, "Thank God, somebody did something. Thank God, enough was enough." I'm telling you right now, I think I, I I don't like war. I'd rather we not have war, but I understand this. It is necessary sometimes that judgment come down. Okay? It is the way of life, folks. That's just, just welcome to the world. We may not like the way it was done. How we're not going to debate all that today. What's the right time? But I know this: if you read your Bible, there are times that Almighty God. We'll take nations and move them to judge other nations. And he, you just read the Old Testament time and time. God's up taking nation of Babylon, and I'm gonna judge my own people, Israel, and I'm gonna bring them in, and they're gonna take it over. And this is the destruction they're gonna come because of this sin or this wickedness. It is a fact of life. It is the way things are. When we come to Second Peter, we see this pointed out in a very real way. Three illustrations are given from Peter. Now, Second Peter is a story about false teachers. We've taken some time to talk about some of their heresies. We've talked about really identifying them as a person, their covetousness, their greed, their immorality, and all the things that come across these false teachers. And now we're in the same section of scripture, but today God has turned. He's talked about these false teachers that are allowed to talk about their doctrines, pervade their goods, deceive people. As verse two and three say that many are led away. Many verse two says follow their pernicious ways. And somebody might say, well, when is this going to be stopped? When is it going to be? When will they be just somebody come out and say enough is enough, enough with the lies, enough with the deception, enough with the untruths that are leading people to hell? When will somebody do something? I've got good news. God is going to do something. Okay, I've got really good news for you. God is not quiet. Man, it's like this. As a matter of fact, in the next few verses, He begins to talk about just what's going to take place to these false teachers. Okay, with me if you would, as we take a look at Second Peter two verse.
numerous other names that people like to use uh, for people who uh, stand out against innovations. But what we have to realize is that we need to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for these type of people who protect the deen from these innovations. And the reason why this is important because these innovations, almost the exact same innovations have been brought into Christianity and Judaism to the point that it's distorted this religion. It's distorted their religion. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam warned us 